So this lesson here, we're going to be looking at how we can find a rule using a table. So something to, related to linear relationships. So uh, last lesson, we kind of looked at these things, so we hopefully know what they are. But in this one, it's more about what you can do, and that is deriving a rule from a set of points that maybe lie in a straight line. So there's some key information that you need to make sure you know first. And these are basically the things that we're looking at. So to a rule, it must be true for every pair of coordinates. So when we get a graph, the rule must be uh, true for every part, um, uh, pair of coordinates, so that both X and the Y. And what we're looking for when we're finding a rule in our graph is that we're always looking for the coefficient of X. Okay, so it's the number, the pronumeral. Uh, or the number in front of the pronumeral, and also a constant. Okay, so you'll see we'll, it'll follow this pattern. So basically, these are the two things that we're always looking for, and I'll show you how we find that. So you're going to make sure you write this first part down, and this is how we calculate. And I guess it's a kind of like a hack of how you might find a rule using either a table or a graph. So we're going to use again. We're always looking for the coefficient and the constant. So the coefficient of the x. Okay, so the coefficient of x will increase in y as x increases by 1. Okay, so if that doesn't make sense, that's we'll, we'll, I'll give you an example soon. But if there is a decrease in y, then the coefficient will be negative. So this is, look, look at this as an example. So as we can see, our x goes up in 1s. Okay, so what we look for in, to find out our coefficient is what is happening here with the y. So as the coefficient of the x goes up, what happens with the y? And you'll see it goes up in twos. Okay, so we've got our two here. So what that means is that our coefficient of x will be two, a plus two. And then we find out uh, from the zero there, we'll get to that next part. But in this case, we'll look at this example down here. As you can see, it is going up in ones, which is fine. And this is also going down in one. So our coefficient for this one will be negative one x, but we know we don't write negative one, so it's just negative x. So you see there. The other way to find the constant, okay, so if we circle this part, so we found the coefficient, you do that by looking at either how the y increases or decreases. To find the constant, what you do is you just look for the zero, okay, and you see what is there. So in these cases here, we look at the zero and we just find what the number is there. In this case, it is a positive three. So that means it is two X plus three. In this instance here, you'll see it's a negative one. So therefore is minus X, negative X minus one. So you find it in two ways. You look at the, uh, how, what it's either increasing or decreasing the Y, and then you just look for a zero, the number at zero, and you see what the Y is in that. And that will give you the constant. Now, what happens if you don't have the zero? in this example here if you don't have the zero you can what you can do is just substitute in your value to work that out what that might be so in this case you'll see it is going up in twos so that's why we have two uh, x plus but we don't know what the constant is so all we're going to do is substitute our x and our y uh, values in or coordinates in and that will end up leaving us finding us a result so we're going to sort of do a bit of back work from there so in this case, it is 2x, which means x will be 2 in this substitution in instance that we'll do. So that's why we've got 2 times 2, and the y will be 5. So we're just going to work out what this is by just going from uh, backtracking from there, we're balance, doing the balance method. So 2 times 2, we know equals 4, plus something will equal 5. In that case, we'll know that that will be 1, and that's how you find it with the 0. So let's look and do a couple of examples here of how we can actually get put this into practice. So first thing I'm going to look at is to see what the difference is down here with the Y. And I can see that it is going up in threes. OK, so each one looks like it's going up in threes. So I know that my okay, coefficient will be three. So it's a positive three X. And then I just look for my constant. So I look for the X value of zero, and it'll be this one here, which will be minus two. So that's the formula that I need to work. It worked out pretty simply. Y equals three X minus two. If you want to check that, you can just simply substitute the values in to make sure that it is true. Now we'll go on to another example here. As you can see, we don't have a zero, so we're going to need to do some substitution. So firstly, I'll see what is happening around here. And I know that it is going down in twos. Okay, so as each jump occurs, I can see that it goes down in twos. Okay, so my coefficient is negative 2x. Now I don't have a zero here, so I need to do some substitution. So I'm going to put substitute these number values in here. So my x in this case will be 3, and my y will be negative 5. So now I just create my new formula. So instead of y, I'm putting negative 5. It is minus 2 times 
my, um, three, sorry, so I can see there, substituting my x into here, and then that will leave me with my coefficient, which is unknown. Okay, so I have two, minus two times three equals my negative six, so now I have my negative five equals negative six with my unknown. If I add six to both sides to get rid of that six, I am left with one equals my unknown. Therefore, that is my uh, formula there. I can go back here, y equals negative 2x plus 1, okay, because I've simply substituted that in. Now, if you just get a uh, graph, all you need to do is just go back, backtrack and just fill in the, the table from there. That way, you can then do the rule from there. So if you get a graph like this, you just start at your lowest x value, which I can see on this one is negative 1. So all I need to do is just fill in the process from there. So I get negative 1, I have 0 equals negative 2, which I can see here. I then have 1 equals negative 1, I then have 2 equals 0, and I have 3 equals 1. So you just go from the graph, place it into a table, and then simply go in to create your formula again. So that's the process that you'll follow. Make sure you understand those rules, and we'll be able to do some practice as we go through class. Thanks, guys.